Listen, y'all have been wanting purple, so I'm going to give y'all purple. I am giving you layers upon layers of purple. Let's do it. Now, this look is going to be absolutely feral. Y'all know it's Feral Monday, um, but there's still going to be technique here that you're going to be able to take. Even though this is going to be absolutely outlandish, you're going to learn a lot of things. So I'm going to start with a very thin layer of a base, clean canvas. This is the shade medium. And I'm going to start with a very small amount, way less than I normally would use because I'm going to mix this in a second. But what I want right now is coverage. I just want a nice, even, clean canvas. <laughs> so I've always wanted to try this from Pat McGrath and we're going to start, you see what it is there. You're about to see what it is. So I'm doing a very smoky wing situation and there's going to be purple here. Okay. I know you're thinking, what are you doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm working in layers. And a lot of times we think to achieve certain looks, we have to do them in certain steps. This is actually going to be the easiest way to get a smoky wing. Okay. Now that base underneath there that we have is going to give this a lot more blend time. And I'm just going to start to tap this with an E27. And we're going to start to wing it outwards and upwards. I'm using the side of the brush. Now I need you to trust the process and you're still going to learn something, even though this is going to get outlandish. We've already learned something. A lot of times, I was saying a lot of times we use eyeliners and what happens is these type of liners, they're meant to set. They're absolutely meant to. That's what they should do. But when you put a little bit of a tacky base under it that doesn't set until you set it, because we're still going to do layers, remember, that gives you so much more blending time and it's going to make it so much easier to blend. So our main focus is just making sure that this is really in our lash line and there's no gaps throw it on like that. Always notice that I put the cap back on everything. Even just a couple seconds every single day makes a difference on how things dry up. So keep that in mind too. So we're just going to tap this. I'm just going to keep letting it run here so you can see what's happening and then flip the brush towards this way and the brush just creates a wing. It's what it does. So we can add a little bit more depth just to the lash line that creates that gradient effect and we're already going to hop into the purple but let's finish tapping that i want it to be darker out here perfect and put on your makeup seat belts because we're going we are already getting to the purple i'm too excited now we're still working with our cream so what i did was i scooped out a little bit of this. Now this sets, and once this sets, it don't move. It don't go nowhere. But I don't want it to set that quickly, and this isn't going to mess with the wear time whatsoever, but what it will, because we're still gonna set it. I talk about that a lot, pressing that shadow in, and that's what we want in a second. But for right now, I want the purples and all of the shimmers that I'm gonna use to be extremely intense. So I mixed some of that KVD, this one right here, and I mix that with just a dot, just a dot of clean canvas. And what that's gonna do is it completely changes the formula and now it's, it's gonna give us a lot more play time, a lot more blend time. And it's not gonna crease, it's not gonna do anything like that because you're gonna see that we will be adding shadows in just a second. So I'm gonna evenly coat the side of my E27 here, the same one. And we're gonna to start to tap that above. I'm grabbing just a little bit more tiny bit. Tap it above the black. And this is why I didn't add that much eyeshadow base because this is technically eyeshadow base that we're putting on here. Tap it. We can still add black. We still have to add the shadows for dimension, but we have to start this gradient effect with the creams first for dimension. This is sometimes things that we aren't told. And then we'll look at these stunning pictures of these eyeshadows and we'll go, well, why doesn't mine look like that? Because dimension. <laughs> I know this is absolutely terrifying right now, but this is what it takes. And you just kind of have to push through to see that final result. And then once we see it at the end, we're going to say, that is a spicy, feral Monday look. And 
Can you believe I'm just using a little tiny E27 to do this? Also bundles are back. I'm going to link the bundle that this is in right now, the E27. I'm gonna link it so you can go check it out. And keep in mind that they are all individually boxed. So if you want to re-gift one or two of them, you can. <laughs> and puffs, puffs make incredible little stocking stuffers. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. You ready? Love this palette. Suggested this for the Sephora cell. Love it. 10 out of 10. Sephora cells over right at one. Get your hopes up. Um, this is all completely normal. Normal. Remember, none of this is set. So let's start to pack that on top of everything. And we're still going to warm up our crease with a warmer shade, but we're not there yet. We're still blending. I whisper a lot. I don't know. It, it just happens. Ooh, that's pretty. Do the same thing over here. And then let's sneak back in with our E27. I do have two. There's not a black eyeshadow. That's a navy and I need black. Um, we're going to grab a black eyeshadow. Any black eyeshadow. E27. And let's just start to do this situation. Again, I'm going to show you. You just have to trust the process. Now I've talked about purple being very, very difficult because it's a very difficult pigment and it wants to patch, it wants to separate. So I'm gonna teach you something. We're gonna grab black eyeshadow and because purple is a jewel tone, the base of it is quite black. So let's just put that on that little gap. We're still gonna fill this in more with our warm tone, but I'm gonna teach you this. Now back into that purple and tap that back on top. Then it's tap dancing again in there. And what that does, it just kind of fills in the base. Cool, right? Really cool. Makeup's fun. Now I'm just gonna keep packing black through here. And we're about to kind of finish that transition. Look at how smooth that looks. Whew. See, I feel that a lot of times we're only shown just look at how great it's going on and again purple I don't care whose purple it is purple is hard but nobody shows how to fix the happy little accidents but that's what I'm here for because a lot of us are gonna have purple it's gonna start to get patchy we're gonna wipe it off but if we learn that we can fill in those gaps with a very small about amount of black eyeshadow and then cover that again with the purple and then it's perfect. Perfect purple. I wish somebody would have told me so much sooner because honestly, I would have given up on makeup. Honestly, this is a look right here. Ooh. Okay, but we need warm. Warmth is going to kind of just make this less scary for everyone. If you're just sitting here and you're and you're just scared of your makeup and you're like, I can't take it, put some put some warm brown in your crease. Think Mac soft brown go get that put it in your crease you won't be scared no more but i'm looking for the proper amount of warmth i just don't think that this is the um, this is the amount of warmth that i need that has a little bit of pink in it i know you don't see the pink i see the pink <laughs> that's not what we need let me see if i can find one i i you know what i also dislike that I'm having to hop around in palettes, but it's Feral Monday, so it's the one day that I feel it's okay to palette hop. So let me see if I can find something else. Again, I apologize for palette hopping. If you've noticed, I hardly ever do that. And by palette hopping, I'm gonna switch over to this palette. It's gonna have some really nice warm tones in it, exactly what I'm looking for. This color right here is going to be fan fiddly -tastic. I'm gonna grab that. I, You know what, I'm thinking I might've picked up too much. And the reason why is these are extremely pigmented. So I'm just going to kind of rub some here on the back of my hand, just two taps. I just did two little taps. Now that right there should be enough. And I'm gonna to start to press that and transition. And I'm using the E28 to do this because we can do it quickly with the side of the brush here and it's okay to melt all this. Nice, nice. Transitioning, lovely. Okay, while I have you here, I just noticed that this is back in stock and I use this all the time. Um, I've talked about it so much on my page. I use this one to kind of pinkify 
my foundations. It's so, so easy. There are other shades. There's a yellow one. There's just so many. And I just realized that it was back in stock. So I'm going to leave you a link. It sold out pretty quickly last time. So don't hesitate. I'll be using it again. I'll probably use it today just to show you, but I love it and go, go grab it. I was saying before that, that this is a very chilly purple cool and that warmth is just going to make this a lot more melted. Don't worry about that. And we're still going to add a ton of shimmer. So get ready for that. Oh, and the reason that I didn't tap the eyeshadow is because sometimes that just taps everything away. So when I just press it on the back of my hand, it just took away a little bit, but it also really evened it out on the brush. So that's why I do that in case you're wondering. But again, there's no right or wrong. If what, if tapping is working, continue. But if you're wondering why I did it, I always like to explain myself. But again, if, if something isn't working, try what I'm doing. But if it's already working, don't stop doing what you're doing. Okay, I'm just going to makeup town. Ready? We're gonna start with this shade and we're gonna grab it here. Ooh, that's nice. This is a C30, we use this one for concealer too, but it's really nice for shimmer shadows. We're gonna put that in the center. Okay, but put on your makeup seat belts. It's, this is just one layer. Notice that I focused it in the center too. And as we're doing this, let's try not to go over this area of the black. We want to kind of go on top of it, on top of it, and give it a little bit of dimension to pop, but we don't want to go directly on that liner. Let's try this out. These are new from Moira Cosmetics. Oh my, that is that's nice. <laughs> and I'm gonna put this on the inner part here. Oh my. That is absolutely stunning. Feather it up a little bit. And by feather, I mean lightly pull it up towards the crease. We want it to be more pigmented on that lid area. I'm gonna pick up more. And then less towards the crease. Again, let's not go on that line, on the black, I should say. And then I'm even gonna go across here, but not over that center. Ah! over that center shade. To be honest, this isn't as, I could layer it up, but I didn't expect these to just be as spectacular as they are. I haven't used them before. This is our first impression here. First impression is, I like it. So I might grab another one and put that in the center. We'll see where we get to. Again, I'm going to go on top of it. And these are so chunky that they're, you can literally just flake them away. Easy peasy. And fallout isn't bad because remember, I pile on my shimmers on here because we want them really nice and intense. So don't be afraid of fallout. It's one of the reasons I do my eyes first. Stunning. I accidentally put the caption in the middle of that. I am so sorry. I don't, I don't know. That doesn't normally happen. I literally posted and I accidentally clicked it. I apologize. <laughs> Y'all want Feral Mondays now. Don't, don't get me wrong. Oh my gosh, look at the different colors. I absolutely do looks for everyone. I do. But on Mondays, I, and other days, but I usually do at least three more wearable looks a week. But I have to have my expressive art wild looks at least twice a week. These are from Danessa Marks. And if you want to have some fun with your makeup, you want Danessa Marks. Fun will be had. And now, oh, by the way, so you're still able to see that Moira Cosmetics underneath there because I'm going to show you really quickly that these are flakes. They're so as you can see that you can see through them and that's what gives them such a beautiful, fun texture. But technically everything we just did isn't covered up. So I didn't want you to think I just covered everything up. You're just seeing texture. So pretty. I love it.
Now I want this to be a little bit more defined. So I'm adding some more of that black eyeshadow, but I have quite a bit on my brush right now. That's fun. Okay, I cleaned this up with micellar water, but this blend is so good. I wanted to show y'all. Take that in. Take it in. <laughs> I feel like y'all are my friends and y'all would get excited because I get excited when y'all show me how blended your eyeshadow is that day. So I wanted to show y'all. <laughs> now we still have quite a bit of cleanup to do, but we're gonna start over here with the cleanup. C30 and micellar water. If y'all ever wondered why I never use tape, I get things more precise if I just look directly into a mirror or my phone like I'm doing right now. And with the micellar water and a C30, so precise. I mean, it's just, look at that. Look at how sharp that is. But the precision. Tape never worked for me, never did. So I wanted a little bit more depth. So I actually grabbed the contour powder here from Kevin Aquan, and I'm gonna grab that on my E28. And I just wanted, I wanted it to be a little bit more cool toned. You can still see the warmth through here, but I wanted to do a little bit more shading. And I can only do so much until we get our foundation on, but I wanted to do smooth out this top area with this color. Perfect transition for that purple. We still have a little bit of warmth. We're not completely cool toned. So pretty. Also wanna mention if you're thinking, Rose, why did you even fix the purple? It got covered with the shimmer. I'll tell you why, because y'all need to know about it. Cause y'all might not want shimmer. And shimmer, yes, it does fix everything, but we need to know how to fix things without having to lose our vision. Say we had the vision of a beautiful, perfectly blended out, smoky purple. Well, we needed to know how to fix that. So I knew I was gonna use shimmer today, but everything, everything is a learning experience. Here comes Jean Bean. Do y'all want to see Jean Bean? Let me grab that Jean Bean. Got y'all a real thick boy to look at. So Jean Bean has a bad eye. Jean Bean was completely feral. Um, y'all are going to see his eye. I don't want y'all to think that that happened under my watch. That would absolutely have not happened. But Jean Bean at one time wanted to be a feral man. He said, I want to go where the wind takes me. I do not want a mama. <laughs> so I found him later in his life. He actually wandered up to my property and I tamed him. And now he wears a sparkly collar and kisses his mommy daily. This is the chonky boy that y'all hear snoring. Um, his face had been crushed, so that's part of the reason he snores. But of course, the vet said he's perfect, he's fine, and he lives the happiest. Gee, he's all just want y'all to know that, like I said, he was just a big old feral boy, and his life before me, he had injuries, but he's all better. He lives a happy life. He, he's always down for hugs. He's extremely special. Just extremely special. Just always ready for a hug. Never bites, never scratches. Just this. There you go. Mm, so sweet. You're so sweet. He's so sweet. <laughs> Look at him, G. Look at the people. I know. You just want hugs and kisses. I could do this all day. I am going to be covered in cat hair now. My face. But worth it. Worth it for these cheeks and all that percolating. All right, let's pop on our lashes here. I'll have the style linked. You can definitely do a big old lash today. There's the cat hair worth it. Now I'm going to want to brighten my inner corner, but I'm going to give you a tip. We really can't get in here and work on brightening and even cleaning up till we get our foundation on. So let's get that on and get the rest of this party going. 
Actually guys, I'm gonna take a quick break. Just literally give me this five minutes. I'm gonna run down and get something else to drink and just stretch my leg because it fell asleep. I'll be right back. I'm gonna come back and finish all this, but I'm gonna take a little break. My leg is asleep. I blame the kitty cat. Okay, be right back. Okay, I'm already back. So we're gonna use this and I'm gonna use this first. And we can say I'm using it as a primer, but I'm really using it as a color corrector. Again, it's gonna be very pink. And a lot of my foundations right now, if you can see how pink that is, are pulling a little too yellow. I'm a little bit more fair now that it's winter and I stay indoors because I don't do well in chilly weather. And it's been chilly here. Probably fall weather for some of you where you live, but I'm not used to the cold, so I stay inside wrapped up. Isn't that pretty? I tried this the other day and it was just everything that I needed currently in my makeup life. I'm gonna do two pumps of this. And you can see that it's a smidgy smidge yellow. But what you're also gonna see is that pink underneath there is going to counteract that. Brush is a prototype. Ooh, now look at that match. And this foundation is just stunning. I love it, love it. And we can build it up more if we want to on our cheek. Yes, and look at how smoothing it is. <laughs> By the way, I had this little scab here and it just covered it up so nicely. I didn't do any spot concealing, anything of that nature. And this foundation is just so blurring, but it's so thin. I'm really into it. Again, if you don't need a new foundation, you don't need a new foundation. But if you're interested in a new foundation or maybe adding it to your holiday wish list, uh, I've, I'm really, really loving this one. And right now it's exactly what my skin is enjoying. Or my skin changes summer, spring, fall, winter, all of that. So it, my skin changes right now where my skin is at. This, this is working for me. Let's grab our E29 and a little bit of that foundation. I'm not gonna grab from here, I'm gonna grab from here. Notice that it's thinner there. We're gonna start to take that around our brows. Take it in here. And then ever so lightly, I'm gonna go across. I'm not going here, I'm going above today. Isn't that smooth? And then I'll just finish around the brow, still using the side of my brush. That way we don't get any streaks. So I just mixed 09, oh, this is gonna be perfect, and 05, Sensual Skin Enhancers here. This one's I use this one mainly as a corrector, but I wanted to use it as a concealer, and this one's going to be too light for me, and together, perfection. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a little bit here on my C30. I'm just going to grab it. I guess I could put these down. I get into such a groove. Grab it on my C30 here. Now, a little bit of this goes a very long way. So I'm going to put some here, a little there. And then I really wanted to clean up underneath here. Nice. You see me make my eyes really big. That's because I can't see because of my lash. And then we'll add some more to the center of the face just for some more coverage. You're going to notice it's not that bright. And the reason why is because I like to do my brightening with my powders as long as I have that depth underneath that powder and you'll notice that this is almost my skin tone but when I have that depth underneath there I'm less likely to have shadows and shadows can look like so many different things it can make your under eye look dark when it's too light um, patchiness there's a whole list in fact I need to start reposting my concealer series but this is fun and again we'll, we'll do some brightening and I'm gonna do a little extra coverage around here. And we're gonna blend it in just a second. 
we're gonna talk about smaller brushes for blending. I've been really into smaller brushes. Now, placement really does matter, and the reason it matters is because I don't want, and I don't really need coverage anywhere but where I am right now. Jimmy is apparently lost and stranded, and no one cares for him, and no one ever has. Good Lord, Jean, I'm in here. Anyways, I was saying before Jean decided to tell all of you that I mistreat him, I like to really focus on placement recently because I'm getting a better wear time and I'm able to really kind of pinpoint what I'm wanting to do. When I use a larger brush, I'm usually using a very small amount with that and I'm buffing it very quickly. But when I'm using a lot more product like this, I want it to stay where I'm putting it and I really need to work it in. So I've been really using this one. So this is the C31 and it just has that precision but it's also dense enough and it's you see that slant there so it just has that ability to smooth it but also keep it exactly where you want it so i'm going to use this i used this once and i think i really liked it i do want you to keep in mind that this is a bronzer i'm just going to start telling y'all this is a bronzer bronze warm 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 bronzer but I love it. But I just feel that we have all gotten so confused with contour and bronzer. You're still gonna get a beautiful sculpt and y'all will notice that I bronze instead of contour almost every single day. But I do want y'all to know that difference. And contouring is extremely harsh. It's, it's intense and it's really meant for special occasion, stage makeup, unless you love wearing it, wear it every single day. But it's technically very, very harsh. And I am only saying this because we're so used to hearing the word contour and then we get bronze. So I'm gonna tell you all the difference every single day. Okay, again, let me just show you something really quickly. Um, I, I, will, I will just go, I will, I will die on this hill, okay? I will absolutely die on this hill. This is a contour, okay? This is a bronzer and this is the, the Patrick Ta which is called a contour. And then this right here is called a contour. So it's a contour. See how cool tone that is? Okay, this, I have to, I, I feel like it's my mission. <laughs> it's, I just want y'all to know the difference because it gets so confusing because everything is so mislabeled. And you know why it's mislabeled? Because the word contour just gets us. We're like, ooh, contour. And I get it, but that's a bronzer and you can still get nice and sculpted from a bronzer but it's not a true absolute contouring intense cheekbone contoured the chin away contour okay i rest my case for today look at the difference so i use my Givenchy powder today with the setting puff let's set this side look how pretty that looks and then i'll just take what's left Ooh, that's nice too. Set the center. So I actually didn't set the outer perimeter. I'm going to go ahead and set with my powder bronzer situation here, same C40. And I'm just going to press it on top of the cream. Layering, no matter what it is, it's just, it's really nice. You just get transition and even our bronzer should transition the way that our eyeshadow transitions. So think of it as not super dark here, but think of it as darker here, going up to a more gradient effect, just like our eyeshadow, same exact concept. And that's what gives us a really nice finish. And I'm still gonna press because I wanna make sure I'm pressing it the same way we do with our eyeshadow. You wanna make sure that you're setting that. And if I swipe it on here, I kind of run that risk of disturbing that cream bronzer. So let's grab this again. This is what we started with. I feel like I'm out here in the bushes. Let me get closer. And I'm just gonna shut my eye and roll this back and forth a couple times, perfect. And instead of coming from underneath here, minus that jean bean hair, instead of coming from under here, cause that could put too much of that black I'm gonna come out of my lashes and I'm just tapping it. And I'm also only gonna apply it on this outer part of my eye. Same thing over here. 
You're gonna have a lot more control when you do this. Coming from underneath here gets out of control very quickly, even on me. All right, let's back into our contour here. I'm grabbing it on the tip of an E28, and I'm just gonna press that underneath here. This is fun. Okay, so I, I wanna use this one. This is pretty. Do you see how these are kind of pink in there and they're so similar to that pink? That's gonna be so pretty. Okay, let's put this on, C41. I think we'll do a little smidgy of the draping. It's beautiful. All right, I think this nude lip is gonna be perfect. This was sent to me, by the way. Um, I buy a lot of Pat McGrath, but this was actually sent to me. This is the lip trio situation. I'll go get you a link. Um, I'm actually gonna start with the lipstick. It's a mini, I can't even handle this. What am I supposed to do with that? It's adorable. So let's go ahead and, oh, oh, that's cute. Oh, so it's not a twist, it's a that. Let's put this on first. Ooh, ooh, it's shiny. I think this is more of like a bomb situation, but it has pigment. Let's put on this now. Is this a liquid lipstick? This is, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just going with it. Now let's go to the lip liner and perfect the lip line. Ooh, it's pretty. Now this is actually stunning. So you can wear it really sheer. See that? See how, see how you can still see my skin through it? Isn't that lovely? Okay, Oprah. And then I'm going to use a, an, 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 I'm gonna use an E27 and I'm just going to pack it into my inner corner. That way you can't see my skin through it. I want it very opaque. Gee, keep it down over there. <laughs> These are really fun. This is also from Myra Cosmetics and even if you don't do these wild spicy looks that I do, if you just want to add some glitter to your inner corner, I highly suggest these. I love them. They're so much fun and they're just so easy. And there's some really pretty champagne colors. This one here is more of a pinky glitter, pinky frost, so pretty. Now I'm gonna use the gloss. I might as well just use all three. I actually really like that texture of the balm. Ooh, this is pretty. It has more pigment. Gorgeous. I love it. And I'm pretty sure that Pat McGrath's having a sale right now. Okay, I'm done. This is so pretty. I feel extra spicy. Thank you for putting up with my feral Mondays. Now, if this is definitely not your vibe, and it's probably not a lot of y'all's vibe, this is my vibe. Plus that blend. Ooh, that blend, that blend. Oh, I love makeup so much. But if this isn't your vibe, tomorrow we'll just do something. Do something a little bit more not feral. <laughs> I also want to use this tomorrow. Some and there's some nice neutral colors in here. Or maybe we'll do something very easy green. That'll be pretty. But everything else from this collection has really, really, really surprised me. So I want to see. I want to see about this. We'll use this tomorrow. I love y'all so much. I'm gonna go get back camera of this side because the front camera does not even do it justice. I love y'all. I don't know what I'm posting tonight, but it's gonna be fun. And I'll see you there. Love you so much.